Hi babies, today we're here to talk about the big three, your sun, your moon, and your rising. And I'm going to go through some astrology basics with you, and we're going to truth bomb and myth bust because I like to keep it real with you all. <laughs> Make sure you stay to the end because that third part is really kind of the key to unlocking um, what fits and feels like it fits about astrology and why some things don't. But it's the best part, so stay tuned for that. Before we go into number one, I want to talk about how you can look at your chart as like the project of your life. And the project of your life has more than one boss. So you're going to have a day-to-day -day boss, you're going to have a big picture boss, and then there's going to be a CEO. That being said, let's start with the sun. This is your identity and your ego, but not your personality. It's not responsible for your whole personality. So I love giving somebody their monthly forecast. The word that I don't love as much is the word horoscope because it's associated with these really generalized um, old standards of the idea that the sun is your personality. And so if you're an Aries, you act like this. And if you're a Taurus, you're completely stubborn. Um, and it's not that Taurus can't be stubborn, but you can have some really easygoing Taurus um, that pick their battles. It's a chart has 20,000, over 20,000 aspects on it. So your son is not the end all be all of who you are. As our goddess Meredith says, <laughs> Here on Soul Navigation Channel, we do not do sun sign astrology. No, we do not. So what is your sun responsible for? It's a little bit your ego. It's definitely an identity, but it is, if you will, the big picture boss because your sun is like the long journey. It's the long game. It's the big destination. Now, of course, there's stops along the way right? But navigating all that your sun sign has to hold in store for you is also the same as navigating your higher purpose, your higher self, your best self, your best potential. It's your creativity at times. It is kind of like your inner navigation. When you are presented with a situation your sun sign, which is kind of like ego a little bit, and your identity um, is going to want to react to it just through that, through your ego, right? Through your identity, who you feel you are. Um, but at the same time, our sun can be the part of our journey that we take the most pride in. I, for instance, am a cancer, so I'm going to take pride in nurturing and caretaking. Um, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you 120%. <laughs> like there, it's, it, it is, it's a, it's a point of pride for me that I know that if I took care of you, that nothing was left undone for you, that no need was left unattended. That's a very nurturing cancer thing to do. Um, and each sign is going to have their own like point of pride. And that is something, if nothing else resonates about your sign for you, that is something that should resonate. However, <laughs> since we've all seen those generalized horoscopes and some things just don't feel like they fit because they're talking about your emotions, but they're referring to your sun sign, whatever the case may be, please leave me a comment. I want to know um, your sun sign and the trait that doesn't fit. Like for me, hi, I'm Susie and I'm a cancer. I'm not shy. So I want to know your name, your sun sign, and the thing that you feel is so typically said about your sun sign and you're like, yeah, that's not me. Please leave me a comment. So finishing up about the sun, obviously it's the day that you're born. So there's 30 chances in a month that you will be the same sun sign as someone else. Um, however, the chances of you being exactly like everyone else in your sun sign is unlikely because it is not responsible for 100% of your personality. It is responsible for that beautiful highest potential, that beautiful highest self, and it's the, the, the long game. It's the journey. There's stops along the way, but it's the main purpose of the main journey. 
Before we go on to number two, do me a favor, hit the like button, show me some love and show the channel some love. Uh, we love having that kind of feedback. So giving us a like lets us know that you like this kind of content and we can give you more. Okay, on to number two, um, the moon. And the moon is responsible for your gut reaction to things. Your moon's your heart right? It's your emotions. Um, and yes, it represents your mom and it represents like your nurturing side. But what I want you to think about is your moon is like the day-to-day -day manager. That's your day-to-day -day supervisor because you are going to react from your moon first. In fact, it's your first boss. If you think about it, when you're little, before you learn to rationalize, before you learn to give the expected answer, right? Before you learn to apply intellect to any of your reactions in fear of what other people may think of you, you react purely out of emotion, happiness, sadness, hunger, crying, cranky, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a visceral reaction of pure emotion. All the other things haven't kicked in yet. It's your, so it's your first boss. It's your unfiltered boss. Um, it's not only how we nurture and, and our emotions and our passion. Um, sometimes it's our triggers, right? Like, so somebody who has less, <laughs> less chill, um, in their, their, their zodiacs moon sign, um, is going to react to have a bigger, stronger, faster, reaction um two things and somebody's got kind of like a chill uh moon sign or somebody's got a very quiet moon sign so each moon sign has its own little nuance and what's really interesting is sometimes they'll say oh like you know a fire sign shouldn't be with um an earth sign or an air sign <sighs> sometimes you can find people that have zodiac signs sun signs that you wouldn't think would go together but their moons line up beautifully. So the other thing about the moon is it's our intuition. So not only is it our unfiltered reaction to things, um, before you apply thought, you're feeling your inner self, you're feeling your higher self, you're probably uh, feeling things based on past experiences and not just past experiences in this lifetime. So summing up your moon sign, that's going to be how you emote, how you react and how you react instinctively. So when somebody says to you, oh, you must be so moody because you're this sign or that sign. Listen, you can have an earth sign or an air sign um, that seems pragmatic and kind of unaffected and then have a fire moon or a watery moon and you're going to feel everything and everyone will know. Um, so it really is very interesting because your moon adds such a beautiful layer and it is how we perceive and process our emotions. Also leave me a comment. I want to know what moon sign you are. Uh, and like, if you're one of those really practical sun signs, but then you have fire moon. <laughs> so you're super passionate. And, and with some people, you don't meet their moon right away. They can be really quiet, right? Like a Scorpio moon can be very quiet about their emotions. Um, and then other people um, have a fire moon that you meet almost first. <laughs> so please tell me if you have a fire moon or if you feel like people meet your emotions first or if they meet your emotions last. I want to know. And before I get into the last one, I'm super excited about to share. Um, you already know I'm Susie. And if you want to book a reading with me, you can find that link in the description box, along with some other really great material and videos that's on the soul navigation channel in fact since we're talking about sun moon and rising i'm going to leave the sun series and the rising series that meredith has done which is so in-depth and so detailed and so accurate astrology doesn't lie but she extra <laughs> never tells a lie um the information is vast it's a library go check it out i'll make sure the links are in there and if you want to see a moon si uh, series, please drop us a comment and let us know. Say that you want to have an all 12 moon series and we'll get working on that for you.
So I'm so excited to be finally at number three, your rising sign. And let me explain in my humble opinion, why it is the CEO, the big boss of your chart. Um, so your rising sign is determined by what sign was hitting the horizon line the moment you were born. So in that second, in that minute, in that moment that you come into this world, it's kind of like your own little big bang, right? It's your explosion into the world. It's your hello into the world. And your rising sign is just that. It is your hello to the world. And your birthday obviously is you have one day and that's your birthday, right? There's only, if you're born on, you know, May 12th, then you're a Taurus, a hundred percent. You're a Taurus. Um, you, the moon changes every 48 hours. So you, you could be one or another moon on that day. There's a chance that the moon is changing, but your rising sign changes every two hours. As that sign hits the horizon line, it doesn't matter if you're born at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 1 a.m., it doesn't matter. At the horizon line, there'll be a sign crossing over and the degree of that sign, the second you're born is you're rising. It is your big boss for several reasons. One of the reasons is when we talk about myth busting and truth bombing, the way that I said that I don't love the old connotation of what a horoscope is, right? That it's all generalized. I, I don't love forecasts that go by your sun sign because the truth of the matter is, and there's good information. Everybody's got great stuff to share. But the fact is, is that you could be a Libra. And you could be a Libra with your son in any house. The thing that determines which house your son is in or which house any transit as the sky moves, we have transits, right? And you'll see everybody talk about there's a new moon in Pisces and there's a, there was a big Pluto and, and uh, Mars conjunction. As the sky moves and as things are happening in the sky, they will happen in different houses, in different arenas, applying to different subjects and express themselves in different ways depending on which house they are in. The only way that you can know which house a transit is in or which house your natal planets are in is by the rising sign. So while you could be a Libra, right? Um, and we don't know which house your, your son is in. If we know that you are a Libra with Gemini rising, then we're going to know exactly where all of those transits are going to take place. It's not your Libra son that decides what houses your transits are taking place in and what, how they're going to express themselves. It's your rising. So that definitely makes it, it's where your chart starts. So that definitely makes it the boss of your chart. And then on top of that, the planet that rules your rising sign is your chart ruler. So if you're a Gemini or a Virgo, then Mercury is your chart ruler. And how that's going to express itself as a Virgo rising um, is that, you know, Mercury likes to talk. I mean, hello. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to have a big impact what your chart ruler is. Um, Venus, as, as a Taurus or a Libra being your chart ruler, if that's your rising sign, is going to make you artistic. It's going to make you want to like take a spoon to things like it's, it's going to apply in your life in a lot of different ways. Um, so your chart ruler is a big deal. It is the CEO, uh, where your planets are and how things manifest in your life, according to the house placement is the big deal. It's your CEO. Um, and what I love and that I'm, I love giving this example about your rising sign. As I said, it's your big hello, right? So it's like <laughs> that uh, old tagline for the TV shows, like when people stop getting real, uh, stop getting polite and start getting real. It's the polite part still, right? So I like to give this example. If you are faced with a situation, especially like a social situation or like a work situation, um, and you're presented with something, how it kind of sits with you um, is going to be how your sun sign reacts. 
how your moon reacts is going to be what your really gut reaction is that you might not say out loud unless you've got a fire moon and then probably everyone will know. But your rising sign is probably not only the appearance of how you will tackle it, but probably the tools that you'll use to tackle it too. So um, it's funny because it's that polite sign, but it's also kind of like publicly um, <laughs> what we use to navigate things when we don't want to show our real emotions and we don't want to kind of give our like ego reaction to things. Um, so the you we probably use our rising sign without realizing it more often. But absolutely, it's ruling your chart, your placement, your houses, your transits. Literally, every time there's a new moon or a full moon, which is twice a month, let alone all the other transits in the sky, um, where your rising sign is really depends on it. that's going to make it expressed in different places. Like we just had a new moon in Pisces and that happened in my seventh house in the house of relationships. And I felt it. Um because I'm a Virgo rising. So like me being a cancer had nothing to do with how that moon affected me. So it's really, really interesting. It's so important. And here's the beautiful thing. So we really need your birth time, obviously. And because it's every two hours that it changes, it's pretty important um, to have your birth time. However, do not fret. If you don't have your birth time, you can book an appointment with one of us and we can do something called rectification. And we can kind of figure out actually through your rising sign, because it's such, <laughs> when you don't know somebody very well, it's kind of what you'll show us. It helps us. We can ask some pointed questions and figure some things out. And uh, we can get your birth time ring get pretty close to that. It really, really helps learn all the other astrology in your chart. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. It was a lot of fun. And this is going to be part of a three-part series. I'm also going to get into Venus your money, your love, your self-worth, and the law of attraction, and some more stuff. So make sure you watch all three parts, and don't forget to hit that like button. All right. Bye, guys.